Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Hue 2 GPS unit from the guys over at Profi CNC. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set it up with the Cube Autopilot on Canvas. Now, Canvas support has only recently been added in both Ardra Pilot as well as Mission Planner as well. So originally when these first released, you weren't able to use it, but it is now there to be able to do. So what we're going to do is walk you through what you need to do to get it working, because there are some settings you need to change and it's not quite as plug and play as using it with I2C, as well as show you how to update the firmware on the unit as well. Now, before I get started, I just want to thank the guys over at 3DXR in the UK. They are a big Profi CNC dealer. They supply the Cube, the Hearlink, Pixhawks, anything you're looking for. And I wouldn't be able to make this video without them. So please do check them out if you are looking for your Hear GPS, your Cube, or anything to build your aircraft. There is a link to them in the description of this video. Please check out their website because they pretty much have everything you would ever need. Okay, so before I get into showing you how to set it up within Ardra Pilot, there are a few things you need to be aware of. The first is that you need to make sure you have the CAN cable fitted. Now, it might have come with either the standard I2C cable on, or it might have the CAN cable fitted already, depending on when you purchased it. Now, they are easy to tell the difference. The CAN cable is simply four wires, whereas the original I2C connection is eight wires. So one is much smaller than the other. If you do have the CAN cable fitted, you're ready to connect it straight to your flight controller. However, if you do have the I2C cable, you will need to swap the cable over. You will also need to change a switch setting within the GPS unit as well, because there's a setting that changes it from I2C to CAN. So it's not as simple as just changing the cable. You also need to change the switch. To do this, you would simply remove the three screws from the back of the GPS. Removing that screw will allow you to swap just the cable, but it won't give you access to the CAN switch. You will need to take the other two out to get access to that switch within it. And then you change it from I2C over to CAN. And then once you've done that, it's ready to go. The next thing you will need to do is make sure that you have connected it to the right port on your flight controller. Now, if you are using the original carrier board, there is something to be aware of, and that is that they have actually labeled the ports slightly wrong. The easiest way to get this right is it needs to connect into the CAN port in the middle at the bottom. Regardless of what it's labeled, that is CAN 1. So it is the one in the middle of the three bottom ports. If yours says CAN 2, don't worry, it is that the screen printing on the board is actually wrong, but I strongly advise setting it into the CAN 1 port, which is the middle one at the bottom, and that's the one we're going to look at changing the settings for. If you are using this with the mini carrier board, it does have it on the bottom here and it is labeled CAN 2, and that is correct in my testing. So just be aware of that. If you're using the mini carrier board, it's actually CAN 2. However, if you're using the standard carrier board, it's the center one in the middle, which is actually CAN 1. So what we're going to do now is make sure that the settings are correct to work with CAN. So I currently have the HERE2 connected to the center CAN port and I'm going to plug it in so it powers up the flight controller. Now the thing you will notice is when you do turn it on you'll get some blue flashing from the LEDs when it first powers up but then it will pretty much go dead and that is because the CAN settings have not been done yet within Ardra Pilot. So what we're going to do is connect to my flight controller and get access to the prams. Once it's connected, there are three settings that we need to change. The first one is to enable the CAN bus because it's actually disabled as standard. Now, the quickest way to do this is to go into your configuration, go into the full parameter list, and in the search bar, type CAN and wait for it to bring up the options for that. And what we're actually looking for in this is can underscore p1 driver and as standard that option is set to zero which is disabled which means the can port and as men but what i said to you about them being labeled wrong so it's can one is currently turned off so what we need to do is set that from zero to one write the params to the flight controller and that will then enable the CAN bus. At this point, you should then reboot the flight controller, reconnect to change the other two settings that we're going to look at now. The next thing is to actually set the GPS to look at CAN rather than normal I2C. 
And to do that, the best way is to type in GPS underscore type. Wait for that search to come up. And then we're looking for the GPS underscore type option. And you'll see, again, it's currently set to one as auto. But if you're going to be using it on CAN, you want to set it to number nine, which forces it into UAV CAN mode. So we're simply going to change it from one to nine. Again, write the params to the flight controller. So that is saved. The last thing we're going to need to change is the LED options because we need to tell the flight controller that we're using an external CAN based LED as well because that isn't available as standard within the software. So to get to that one we need to type NTF underscore LED. Once that search has come up, you're looking for NTF underscore LED underscore types, and you'll see that it's currently set to 199. Now, if we click on this option, it will show you what LEDs have been enabled as standard. And again, we need to turn on the one that says UAV CAN. And to do that, you simply click the box, write the params, and once you've done that, it will then enable the CAN bus, the LED, and the CAN type GPS within Ardrapilot. So what we're going to do now is disconnect, reboot the flight controller, and what you will notice this time is if you've got this correct and it is set up and working, you will notice that the LEDs flash the blue when you first turn it on, but you then should get your status LEDs come to life on the flight controller just like you did with the standard one. So I'm now going to connect as well. Let it download the prams and then we're connected and working. And if we go into the flight data screen, you will actually see that we now have a valid GPS fix showing down here and not saying no GPS is detected. So it now is picking up the GPS data as well. If I then go down into the status and if we look at the GPS data for that, you can see that there are various options showing now. So if we look for the SAT count is showing currently 11. Um, something to be aware of is you won't get a HDOP result when using Canvas if, because it looks at the GPS slightly differently, so don't worry about that. But we are getting a SAT count and it is showing a valid 3D fix as well, so we know we're ready to go. Once you have got it set up and it looks all okay, you can then go in and check the actual CAN settings for the Hue 2 GPS, as well as update the firmware as well. So to get to the CAN settings, you need to go into initial setup once your flight controller is connected with the CAN in. We're then going to go under optional hardware and go down to UAV CAN. And under here, this allows you to check the status of the CAN connection to the flight controller, as well as make sure that the GPS is correct and update the firmware as well. Now, something to be aware of, when you do this, it will actually disconnect your flight controller from Ardrapilot because it basically turns it into a pass-through mode and you then are talking directly with the GPS unit itself. So what we're going to do is click on SL CAN mode CAN 1. And what that will do is disconnect the flight controller and then after a couple of seconds you will actually get your GPS info pop up with the ID as well as the information like serial number and things like that. So you can see it's now come up and I've got the name, the operational mode, health, uptime, hardware and the software revisions. You then at the end have the option to update the firmware which we'll come back to now in a second as well as the have the option to change the parameters. Now I don't advise that you do anything with the parameters as standard unless you have any specific reason to however you can go into here and it will bring up the number of parameters that are available on the new GPS. Now something to be aware of with here too it does have an onboard barrow sensor however it is disabled as standard and you can see that it is up here the value is zero but then it is currently turned off but you can turn it on if you want to you can also change with the led mode settings and things like that as standard you shouldn't need to do anything in here it should basically just work with regards to updating the firmware, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I would strongly suggest once you've got it all connected that you do update the firmware on your GPS to the latest version. Now, the thing to understand with this is there are actually two files that you need. One of them 
is the bootloader and the other one is the firmware itself and again these are available to download on the QPilot website under here to instructions scroll to the bottom and you then have the latest version located down here now you do need to do both of these you first of all need to flash the bootloader and then you need to flash the application files you need to do one then the other when you do do this update you download both files to your computer so we're going to click download that one and we're going to download that one return to mission planner and then we're going to click update and it's going to give you the option of searching on the internet or looking for it manually now at this time the internet option doesn't work so you're going to want to click no that will then give you the option of looking for the files directly on your computer and as I've just downloaded them if I go into downloads you can see the two files are located here the first one you would want to do is do the bootloader update and when you do this the lights on the GPS will flash and when it's complete they will go basically solid green do not turn them off until the lights have gone solid and you are a hundred percent sure it has flashed something to be aware of is it, when you flash the bootloader and you reboot it the lights will stay solid green and it will not work you need to then come back in and flash the hex file as well for the app you need to do one do it reboot it reconnect then do the other and then once you've done both of them your here to gps unit is fully updated and it's ready to rock and roll one other thing I wanted to talk about with the here too is the arming button with canvas it does not work and that isn't something that's going to happen so you do need to take that into account before you change over to cam and if you are going to use an arm button you're gonna have to use an external one now you can use the one that comes in the kit when you get your Pixhawk cube or you can choose to disable that functionality within Ardrapilot as well. And I'm going to show you how to do that now too. But do be aware, if you're using Canvas, the arm button on the GPS unit is not available. So it's either turn it off or use an external one. To change the arm check so it ignores the button because you're not using an external one and the internal one doesn't work on cam, you simply need to go into your full parameter list again, search for arm, and wait for the options to come up and you're looking for arming underscore check and that option is where we will go and click on the number and this gives you the current options of what it will check before it will allow you to arm the motors now I can guarantee yours is probably set to all as standard and that includes the hardware safety switch so if you're not going to use a hardware safety switch you unclick the all option and I've selected barometer, compass, GPS lock-ins, parameters, RC channels, board voltage, battery level, logging as well as GPS configuration but the key here is to make sure hardware safety switch is actually turned off if you're not going to be using the external one. Overall, that's pretty much it for this video, and hopefully that's given you an idea of how to set up Canvas with the Here2 GPS. Again, thanks to the guys at 3DXR. Please do check them out. There's a link in the description. If it's been helpful, please do subscribe to the channel, and I will do another video again soon. Please do subscribe to the channel and check out all of the other videos we have available. They are also split into playlists to help you easily find the ones that are relevant to you. If you would like to support the channel, please check out the links that are in the description for each video. You will find the links for the products we've been talking about and it's only by you guys purchasing via these links that allows us to keep making videos and buy products to talk about in the future. Please also check us out and follow us on all of the social media platforms such as Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. We're beginning to build these accounts up and whilst it is early days, I would appreciate it if you would like, share and follow us on these platforms. Finally, please also check out my website, www.madrc.com. Now, this is somewhere that we've been putting some of our blog posts and things like that over the last couple of years. So if you're interested in having a look, please do go check it out. That is it. Please do click that subscribe button. Thank you very much. And I will do another video again soon.